Mm. She looks very lovely. She's glowing. Okay, her hair looks great. Today is September 10th, 2024, which means exactly 10 years ago today, a decade ago today, I posted my very first YouTube video. It was a Q&A. Um, mm. Nothing special except my hair. My hair was absolutely positive. Oh, I was thinking, how could she post a Q&A on her first video if no one knew who she was, but she's from Vine? I'll ne I, I, always, I wasn't a, on Vine coming up, so like I never thought about it. But yeah, she was a Vine person. So interesting. Tilly Majestic. But naturally, uh, when you come across like a big milestone, like a 10-year anniversary, it makes one reflect. So I've been reflecting. And as I've reflected on the past 10 years of my life, my career at large, I feel like I owe... A lot of people apologies mm. so interesting she's making it into a youtube video i wonder if she reached out to them privately as well or maybe that wouldn't have been it okay interesting so we're gonna see her do it on okay on a video interesting we're so youtube i just want to say this out loud i do believe there are things right i do believe there are things that are appropriate for off the internet but then you have to wonder this whole ecosystem that is the internet sometimes it is people's like plugged in reality like what happens here is just as real as what happens off of here for people and i think that's a valid perspective as well if people plug into youtube the way that we imagined we'd plug into video games when we were young or virtual reality or you know the oculus or whatever so maybe gabby feels like this makes sense like i mean she is a performer she is on stage so let's see I wrote some notes. <laughs> I have a list. Okay, so the first bunch of people that I'd like to say thank you and I'm sorry to is anyone I've ever worked with from collaborators, producers, uh, management, agents, anyone from PA on set to director, special, I'm sorry, it goes out to MTV and YouTube and YouTube Originals because I was difficult to work with. I took a lot of opportunities that I didn't deserve and also had no business doing. <laughs> there were a lot of people who kind of, you know, practiced and trained and wanted some of those opportunities their whole lives. And I was able to do them with really little to no actual effort in that space. This apology covers a wide breadth of people. So like I said, if you've ever worked with me or had an interaction with me at some type of work event and you were unhappy or felt hurt in some way, I'm very sorry and thank you for the opportunities that i've been given and uh the patience and grace that i've been shown that i definitely didn't deserve and the professionalism as well that i definitely didn't deserve and definitely was not displaying so thank you and i'm sorry in that vein i also want to say sorry to anybody who feels like i used them or took advantage of them in any type of collaboration or work setting as well whether you helped me out with a project and didn't get your remind me did gabby hannah ever do an update on the cody co situation and the tana situation like does she ever comment on it further proper flowers or didn't pay you well or at all a lot of times there was just like a collaboration basis and i feel like i could have done better with hyping up people that i've worked with and showing appreciation by sharing influence with people who have helped me out hmm. literally reading my notes i was selfish only cared about how i could benefit <laughs> thank you and i'm sorry i got my lick back <laughs> um i also want to say thank you and i'm sorry to all of my friends past present who i just uh i dumped so much negativity on i was such a dark cloud and was constantly just in something that i just I know what it's like to be around somebody who's always like in some type of like negative headspace. So thank you to anybody who's been there for me in those times. And I'm sorry for anybody who was affected or brought down by my just complaining, my complaining. And also in that vein gossip, I want to say sorry to anybody who. This feels so vague and weird. It almost, I never can tell with Gabby, is she being authentic or is this just like a hope for views like what is this apology for we're all, we're almost four minutes in and i just feel so it's so vague so far so i'm assuming she's gonna name names i'm just gonna go to the comments really fast if she is apologetic about her creative choices that's her prerogative people saying she shouldn't apologize when she was obviously convi convicted about this shows a lot of disrespect even if the intentions are good uh why am I crying? I'm so happy to see you grow. Mm, all right. Let's see. Whether I've spoken out of turn, behind your back, shared information that wasn't mine to share, I'm sorry. 
again, I got my lick back. And this was a big, big lesson for me in general um, about, yeah, speaking about somebody when they're not in the room in, in a negative way or in a way that uh, is overstepping personal boundaries. So that's a big one for me. I feel like I owe that apology to a lot of people from literally my whole life uh, and especially in my entertainment career. So um, sorry about that. I genuinely have learned and grown in that area a lot and am still to this day. It's really hard not to. Mm. When people say I genuinely have changed. Mm. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I also want to say sorry to anybody who was a subject of a story time video or who I shared a personal experience with or even not a personal experience. Like anytime, anytime I've ever engaged in celebrity gossip or use somebody as a punchline, um, but mainly the story times. Like when I was sharing these personal experiences online for um, entertainment content factor, like, yeah, one of my ickiest one of my ickiest things, I feel like, which which blows because it was also one of my biggest things, right? This is one of the reasons I deleted, like, all... Gabby's another good example of, like, what she's willing to do for fame. Because I remember, I've been a YouTuber, too, for a very long time. And I know my journey is so different than other people. And I'm just sharing this because I think it's important to realize, like, not everybody on YouTube is playing the same game. And I saw Gabby come up. Like, I've been on YouTube since, like, 2009, right? I think that's when I joined, I think... So, like, I will have been on YouTube for, like, what, 20 years? And just, like, I've been on YouTube for, like, 15 years. Right? This is a long time to be on the internet. And it only became, like, a real job for me the last few years because every time I saw a Gabby video go viral, every time I saw these people take off, I just thought to myself, like, I can't bring myself to make that kind of content. And I really do think, again, and I'm not saying this as a, as a, a shade because I have a podcast coming up on this, but I think it's important to know, like, how damaged were you as a child? Because as much as I have all the bad things on my resume, like borderline and depression and PTSD and all that other stuff, to be honest with you, and I'm going to be so real with you, I think I just am not as fucked up as everybody else. I don't think I fall into that category. So like the ratio of willing to do things in order to reach fame, does it, it doesn't match because I had a lot more to lose. Like dying was like wasn't the worst thing, right? Living in a particular way was worse than dying for me. And I think when you have nothing left to lose because everything around you is trash anyways, I think you're usually willing to do things that other people who have things to lose aren't willing to do. Like I had things to lose. So I think like with Trisha, Tana, Gabby, the ratio of like things to lose and their desire for fame, Logan Paul, same thing. I feel like in my opinion, these people like didn't have as much to lose or something, or maybe I don't know what it was because I like, I know there was opportunities for me to do things, but I couldn't bring myself to do them because I had like, I had things to lose. <laughs> like I was like, no, I'm not trading in fame for this. I'm not willing to trade this in for this, but I feel like, do they have nothing to lose for the things that they did you know what I'm saying? It's like there's something about that that's interesting to my brain. And I'm just observing it. I'm not judging it because I know everyone's journey is different. If I was Gabby, I would have made Gabby decisions. If I was Trisha, I would have made Trisha decisions. If I was Tana, I would have made Tana decisions. But I wasn't any of these people. I was a Britney. And Britney just had a completely different decision, right? I had a different decision to make, right? Um, your entire perspective of the world completely changes when you have trauma. You don't even think about having something to lose, but that's not true because I have trauma. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying all of us have trauma. People who are at a certain level of fucked up traumatized, they don't have anything to lose, which is why I think these people are in that category. I think if you're a certain level of fucked up traumatized, then you're willing to not have something to lose, which is why I always say like I'm medium traumatized. I don't think I'm super traumatized. I mean, I'm traumatized enough again because people look at me all the time and they're like, oh, Brittany must be these like really fucked up traumatic person because she has borderline. But like the truth is, is like, nah, not really. Like my borderline's like not even a main character in my life, but it used to be a problem, but I still managed to work. Used to be a problem, but I had friends and family. Used to be a problem, but I had lots of relationships. It's like you can be traumatized, but I think it's the level of trauma that you impact you're impacted by. And then there are people with like little to no trauma, but they still have trauma because like existing is traumatic. So I think Gabby is also one of the people who fall into that category of like 
traumatized. Like I've been assaulted. Someone else has been assaulted. But then the way we have a relationship with that trauma is different because of the tools we had to sort of heal or not heal past it. Like I'm still on my journey of healing with it for sure. It's probably going to be a little while before I feel like I'm on the other side of that fully. But at the same time, like I know I'm doing better than like some other people, but I don't want to compare it either. So I compare it to my past self. So if I compare where I am now with my trauma to my past self, I know I'm better. I think that's a better way to do it. I don't like to compare people's traumas. I feel like it's unfair. Like I, if I was Gabby, I would have made Gabby decisions. And I think I really, I do really believe that. I think if I was somebody else, I would have made those decisions because I would have thought just like they thought this is the best option I have. So Gabby found Jesus and she seems better. She is glowing. Her hair is fabulous. Some people find Christ. Some people find religion. So, okay. (sighs) Like, that's interesting, right? Maybe this was the tool she needed, right? Uh, Chat says, you had a foundation, though. I don't know how to explain it. That I 100% agree with. I had an incredible foundation. Like, I, I really did. Like, my parents obviously were the cause of a lot of my problems growing up. But at the same time, they are incredible people. They change on the daily. They're always growing and getting better. But they are, they gave me a really good foundation to start off on. So I do give them a lot of credit for that, which also coincides with what we know about like child psychology or at least children growing up in broken homes and the trajectory of those child's lives just based off of who their parents are. Yeah, based off who my parents are, I had a much better chance of success. You know, Taylor, welcome to uh, upgraded membership. Oh, nice. Welcome, Taylor. Thank you so much. Okay, let's go back to Gabby all of my videos. I get that comment all the time. Like, why did you delete all your videos? And that was mostly it. It was just not a representation of myself. It was not a representation of Christ. It was not a representation of anybody I wanted to be. And it was off the back. Wasn't a representation of Christ. Interesting. Interesting. Hold on. Chet says they are called morals. Some people have horrid trauma yet do not take it out on others. Will others will a, with a good upbringing, maybe become a narcissist, without a good upbringing, will become a narcissist. Yeah, I will say that I, I also worked really hard to figure out my morals. And you guys know, I think my values, I have a whole podcast on this, like how to figure out your values. I think like that I live by a code of honor. And I know a lot of people don't or they think they do, but it's a different kind of code. And that's why I think like, oh my God, wait until I review Julia Fox's book. I'm going to have to meditate on it because girl, this woman has no code of honor up till this day, up until the end of her book, zero code of honor. And I'm like, oh. Like she is super dangerous to me. People without a code of honor are very dangerous to me because they're unpredictable. Though they're the most predictable because you can just assume they're gonna fuck you over. Okay, people without a code of honor, people who go low when other, you know, instead of going high, they are the people who will fuck you over. So you can't, you you can't, you know what I'm saying? of gossip and complaining and telling one-sided narratives and making other people feel victimized and bullied whether it's anonymous or not like I just put people in a situation where they felt embarrassed and hurt and ashamed and again I got my lick back like by scale anybody that I've ever told a story about and shown a a negative light on I definitely have felt the weight of that and uh, God humbled me and taught me empathy in that area so I'm genuinely Mm -hmm. wholeheartedly sorry for what I put you through it was probably really really difficult and traumatizing so I feel you and I'm sorry. I also wanna take this time to say I'm sorry to my family or just in general people at home who feel like I either capitalized on, you know, shared experiences that shouldn't have been shared so freely or just projecting anything that I was feeling onto you. I feel like um, I do that. This is weird. I don't understand what's happening. Like, I really think it's okay for YouTubers to put a lot of stuff on the internet. I really do. I just don't understand why this is happening on the internet. Like, is this a performance piece? Is this, what is this? Like, what am I supposed to be feeling as a content consumer? What's the vibe here? Um, Existentialist says, Brittany, I broke my ankle recently and I can't tell you how much your streams have been helping me from going stir crazy. Thank you so much. Oh my God, shout out to ankle breaks. It happens to the best of us. I've never really broken an ankle, but I have sprained it many times skateboarding. And let me tell you, even that girl, uh, I wish you the most uh, speediest of recoveries. And I'm glad the streams are helping you out. Mariah says, this feels like an episode of My Name is Earl, bro. It feels very, I I think I'm having a hard time following her, but okay, let's see. I think she's just trying to rebuild her parasocial relationship with her audience. Oh, maybe. Yeah, that could make sense. 
that in general, but I think with my family, I've done that a lot. There's a lot of things I could say and want to say to my family, which I'm sure I will more in person. Hey guys, um, mm -hmm. and talking about my past, I know I'm talking about your past as well. So I'm sorry about that. Mm -hmm. And thank you for not being too hard on me about it. Um, That's true. Gabby's story intertwines with a lot of people's stories and we can't forget that. Every time we come into someone's life, we become a character in their life. So that's that's true. I'm sorry for not visiting more, for my contribution to any wedges or distance in our relationships. I'm so grateful to be home. I have loved spending the last year or so here and uh, I feel really just blessed and grateful to have so many people here right off the bat as soon as I came back. Oh, uh, good point. Alex says it's very AA apologizing to people you've wronged is one of many of these steps. Yeah, maybe that's what she's doing, I guess. Maybe that's what she's doing. I would have loved a genuine apology. Like, I would have loved, like, a self-awareness thing. The problem is, like, with Fousey, maybe we should watch that. There's, like, 30 minutes of the Bradley Barn podcast with Fousey that I was watching, and I was just thinking to myself, like, yeah, this is not a changed person. Not yet. But it's interesting all the same. And I think that that's the fascinating part about people is there – I don't know that Gabby is – have like, she doesn't feel grounded. And neither does Fusi. Now, I don't know if it's a bipolar thing. I don't think so. I've met so many people with bipolar who feel so grounded to me. But they both feel very ungrounded still. Even though she's looking fantastic and I want to embrace it, it doesn't feel as grounded as I'd like. But who the fuck am I? I could be deeply wrong about this, right? Back, And I really appreciate you. And I'm looking forward to the years to come now that I am here in Pennsylvania in front of this pile of logs. I love you. And I also have to give the biggest, most, <sighs> like how could I ever find the words? I need to apologize to all of my fans, anybody who ever supported me for so many things, uh, being inconsistent, for worrying you, for breaking promises, for mm. being a bad role model, first and foremost, honestly, like from the beginning of my career to the end, like I'm right now I'm deleting so much content. I'm deleting a lot of my music. So I know I'll probably get some questions about, you know, where's the song, where's the song? Uh, where are these music videos? I took a lot of it down. It was either because of profanity, subject matter, or just like immodesty. Like I'm embarrassed watching a lot of those videos. Um, I grew a lot. I wish I would have taken more advice when I was coming up in the in the field. Like I remember one of my first writing sessions, somebody said, I don't think Gabby has faked any of her illnesses to be uh, to be clear. I'm seeing in chat that you guys are saying just to be clear, like you said, her meltdown on TikTok was on live was scary and her manic posting was scary. I don't think she faked that. I don't think she faked anything. I think she was genuinely sick. Right. Has she apologized to Jesse Smiles, though? That's a good question. I wonder if she'll do that in this video, like named, because what she said to Jesse was like really fucked up. So that would be good. Um, she should apologize to these people. Maybe she did it in private. Maybe she did it in private or something as of recently, maybe as of recently of this video. Right. And I know she went for Rachel and she went for a bunch of other people. Hmm said to me like you can you can avoid swearing if you can help it and I was like no I want to swear I'm so edgy and ignoring even like people telling me that I should like cover up more and stuff like I wish I would have because now here I am 33 years old okay hold up chat says I don't know what she could present for an apology to come off as different or good to us like this may just be her and she talks what she sounds like genuine when genuine I think for the people in my audience I think we are genuinely open to people changing I think we would be very excited and very much rooting for Gabby if we felt like it was grounded and not that we're the arbiters of all things that are true. But I think there are things you look for in a person who has genuinely changed and it's not just like looking different. It's embodying like a sense of knowing and understanding. And she hasn't displayed that just yet. She's giving ge very general apologies. I'm not sure she knows what she's sorry for. Uh, you know, nothing she's telling me yet tells me that she knows what she did. And even if she thinks it's wrong, right? So, and I don't know if she apologized to people in private, but either way, I do think we've seen people genuinely change and shift and have genuine moments, but she obviously is getting better. So I'm gonna, uh, you know, I'm gonna compliment that. She looks like she's doing better. I don't know though. Let's see. Taylor says in her Oxford interview, she doubled down on the Rachel Oates thing by saying, I just realized I don't care. Consider the source. What does she know? When Rachel has a degree in literature oh about because she reviewed gabby's book or whatever was that the issue with rachel and gabby because like no offense to gabby i mean no offense to any of these people like i hate to say it this way but with peace and love 
you're not literary geniuses. You're just like social media people who like wrote some stuff to make your ego feel good about yourself, which a lot of artists are. Most artists are. Most artists are people creating to express their own ego or maybe it's like there's no way Gabby's book was like profound, right? It just feels like you would have liked it if you liked Gabby, which is valid. I've read a lot of books in my life that I don't think are great books, but I still love them, right? So like, is that the issue? Like, it sounds so silly for somebody like, oh, they didn't like my book. Who cares, bro? I don't know. I don't know the total detail, but like, mm, I don't get that. I don't get that. Okay. Plus I like Rachel. So it feels maybe, I don't know, maybe that's my bias because I do like Rachel over Gabby, but then I don't even watch Rachel like religiously. I just like her as a consciousness. <sighs> old, um, embarrassed and having to delete a lot of work and effort that I, you know, put into a project, but no regrets. I learned a lot. I learned a lot and everything is just tuition at God university, time spent at God university, lessons learned, but I'm so sorry for all of the just poor behavior, reckless behavior, um, self-centered, vain, prideful, just meaningless content and yeah, I'm going to do everything I can to counteract that. Um, I have a sort of constant battle, like literally always of like, can I disappear into nothing and just like exist, you know, <laughs> in the woods? And knowing that I've been given a great responsibility that I already fumbled and misused and needing to use that responsibility uh, more wisely. So yeah, I've been like a really, I've been a really poor example and I've been really ungrateful to you. I also want to say a special I'm sorry to any of my patrons on Patreon. Um, just so inconsistent like yeah I, I gotta do better I know I've been saying that for so long which is the problem like it's I'm trying so hard I really am and I know apologies have to come with action I really am trying like I'm trying like I need I need help like something to make it so that I can be consistent because um I just I don't have the greatest executive functioning in fact I have impaired executive functioning and I'm trying to figure out how to do it it's it's so crazy for me to like look back at at the stuff that I used to do. I'm like, how did I do that? Because I was such a like machine, just an endless just stream of like work and content, but it was also dumb and bad and meaningless. And that's why it was so easy to turn it out. And also I was an NPC because I did not have the Holy Spirit in me. And I was just like operating like in this world, like literally a robot, like work, pay attention to me, make money, like really, really needed Jesus. Behold our God seated on his throne. Come, let us adore him. Behold our king. Nothing can compare. Come, let us adore. Oh, speaking of behold our God, I want to record a cover. She did hit that note at the end, though, Discord said. I mean, Gabby, Gabby has a nice voice. Um, Our God is an awesome. I'm just kidding. Um, you know, look, everyone goes through a bubble pop and everyone has an experience with it. Look, I don't know if Gabby's ADHD. I don't know how neurodivergent our girl is. She's neurodivergent in general, but I don't know how neurodivergent she really is. So I think the dilemma is that you can't overpromise, but also you have to be um, I don't know. It, it's hard to say like what she should or should not do. I think as long as she's heading towards her joy, I, she is like very ADHD energy to me. So I don't know if she does have it. Um, you know, she does have bipolar, so that's going to impact life. And there's no reason that you can't be functional with these things. It's just like, sometimes I think neurodivergent people or people who are mentally unique, we tend to, we do overshare. And I think if the wrong people hear us, they're not going to understand us. But I think sometimes even when the best people hear you, they're going to sense like a, mm, I don't know how grounded you feel, you know? So she doesn't feel like the most grounded person to me personally, but I think it's because she decides to do the way she talks or edits her videos or the way she the way she chooses to signal herself onto the internet is interesting. Look, I have content from like a long, long time ago that I took down off the internet, okay? It felt good to express myself, but it's 
not good. It's not good content. It's not interesting. But more than that, it's like too much. It doesn't make sense, you know? And I mean this in the nicest way possible. The internet does not need you unmasked. The internet needs you understanding that people are watching you and you're in public. You know, I don't want to live in an unmasked world. I want to live in a world where uh, we signal safety to one another enough to keep going throughout our day and while understanding the nuances of how people express themselves. I want there to be a deep understanding of how people express themselves and the uniqueness in that. And then I want us to signal safety to one another. And I think Gabby has a tendency to kind of signal a tortured soul. I'm an artist. I'm like, and it's just like nobody, the tortured artist is not a safe person to be around. I don't know how many times we have to go through this cycle, but I know as a young person, the tortured artist sound like a great trope to be a part of. They are not healthy people. The tortured artist is a not a good person. So if you want to be a tortured artist, you can do that. But I think that's also a red flag. So I feel like sometimes Gabby has that. But I also think that like that's her journey and that's okay as well. I don't think she's a bad person, by the way, like an evil person. But I think she's constantly outside of her joy. So in a philosophy sense, she's closer to her evil. But I don't really think like humans are more than animals. So to judge them as like this really ill-intended person who's just, I just see them as kind of like biologically fucked up in a way or like something went wrong or you made a choice. But it, instead of like hating that person, it's more like, okay, um, I'm going to do this if you're going to do this because I need to protect myself. I'm open with boundaries. So like, again, you know how yesterday we talked about people who slide into your DMs, you don't answer, you don't answer it if Kanye slides into your DMs, you don't answer if Drake calls, you don't answer DMs if Gabby calls. Okay, if Gabby slides into your DMs, you don't answer that. You feel me? Like, she just doesn't feel like she has a grasp on being grounded even if she's religious. Like, religious people can be grounded, okay? Not all of them are not grounded. You can be grounded in religious. She doesn't feel very grounded. But you know what? Everyone's on a journey. And I also have to say thank you, and I'm sorry to anybody who's literally ever ordered from Look Design because it has been slow ship times, poor packaging, bad customer. I'm sorry, hold on. Chat shared a really important uh, comment, says... As a person who was diagnosed last year with bipolar 2 and began taking medicine this year, it takes a long time to become grounded. It can take six months to feel like I'm still so far from grounded. Oh, it has been six months and I feel so far from grounded. I think this is important to recognize too, right? Like that's valid. The journey is valid. That's why I think people wanted Gabby to take a year off, which she did. Gabby took a year off. But like what's a year in the span of a lifetime? Maybe it was enough time. Maybe it wasn't enough time. But she's working on it and that's all that matters customer service like listen I know I know and I'm so grateful to you I'm so grateful to you I'm trying so hard I'm trying so hard and when I come back with like the next like iteration also you know you remember how my haters on the internet get creeped out when I sing song and videos or like that's Britney's borderline I'm like what Gabby does it and it makes me think she's crazy I need to stop singing in my videos it looks crazy it's funny for us because it feels like we're in like a like a like a little classroom and it's just kind of fun. But when Gabby does it, I'm like, <sighs> but see, when gay people do it, I think it's funny. Maybe it's the maybe it's the stigma of the mental health stuff, because when gay TikTokers, YouTubers, performers sing during interviews, I'm like, this is so fun. Like, this is so fun. But then when I watch Gabby do it, my 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 alarm bells go off. But maybe it's the stigma of mental health. Because I don't feel that way when I watch other people sing song. I don't. I do not feel any bad feelings at all. I just feel fun. So what is it? Is it because we're? Is it because we have the B? Is it because we have the BPD? Is that the? Is it the stigma? Yeah, maybe it's the stigma. Oh, she doesn't sing song. She performs. That's true. That is what annoys me. Maybe it's that. Stephanie says, you don't sound crazy when you sing. You sound like you're filling the silence with your pretty voice. That's true, too. I mean, I do it all the time at home. I'm always singing. Like, I sing at home all the time. I had The other day, I had, like, a sing marathon. I was singing Sam Smith, Celine Dion, Whitney Houston, Adele on the top of my lungs. It was amazing. While well, I was making bread. I was, like, making bread and singing. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Taylor says she doesn't sing song. Yeah, she performs. Maybe that's what it is. Like, she's the perform. It's the performance that makes me feel weird. 
But then of course people are going to hear me do that and think the same thing. All I know is like, I watch so many YouTubers I don't get that feeling from, but I get it from her. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. Uh, Exis uh, Existential says, I don't know. I think vibes has a lot to do with it. She's super serious when she does it. It makes it feel, so oh, that's true. She actually is a singer versus I'm not a singer. I d oh, wait. Okay. Maybe that's what it is. Cause I am not a singer. I just like to sing. Like, I do not make music. I do not think I'm a singer. I don't think I would ever be a performer. I'm not interested in it. So I'm just singing to sing. Gabby does sound way too serious when she sings because she is a singer. That's the problem is like, I don't think Gabby's, I don't love her. I don't like her music, but like, I don't like anyone's music. So it's fine, I guess. But like, yeah, maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's why I don't like it. She goes uh, go goes all in. You are clearing clearly filling up space. Okay, okay. Then I'll keep singing as long as I don't come off like Gabby. Because like, yeah, I'm not trying to be like, I'm not trying to be like buy my music. You know, I don't know. Okay, good discussion, guys. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm. I promise I'm gonna do better each time. Does get better. I know it's still bad, but it is getting better. And I'm trying to be more consistent. I'm trying to be more transparent. And uh, just, dude, thank you. Thank you for sticking around. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm not good at this. I'm trying. If I forgot someone, um, forgive me. <laughs> like I look back at so many situations and I just feel embarrassed and I feel shame, but then I remember there is no condemnation or shame in Christ and that I've been wiped clean and Jesus forgives me. And I can hope that you guys forgive me, but I, I can't force that. But I do want to say that if there's anybody out there who feels like they owe me an apology or feels like, you know, feels like maybe they did me dirty a little bit, you know, if we had an interaction or an altercation of any type, um, I just want you to know, I forgive you too. So if there's a question Ugh. on whether or not we have beef. We no, this feels so weird. Like this feels like this does not feel profound or interesting or like, yeah, see, this doesn't feel like, it feels so, it feels like Fusi. I'm telling you, they have the same energy when they talk. It's like they're trying to be deep, but it's so superficial. It's so superficial. What a journey to be on. But you know, this is how it feels. Have you ever had somebody try to apologize to you and you can tell like they don't get it? I don't like apologies like this. Don't apologize, girl. It's totally fine. We're good. But don't apologize to me. Like, I know you don't get it. You're not getting it. Don't apologize to me. It's totally okay. You know, I totally feel you. It's absolutely okay. Don't even worry about it. But like, it it's fine. Like, we absolutely do not. Not on my end anyways. Um, I love literally everyone. I love you all. Even when it hurts. Even when it's hard. I love everyone. I forgive everybody because my God, Jesus Christ, loved Ugh. me and forgave me when I did not deserve it and before I even asked. So I could not hold any unforgiveness in my heart. And I want to apologize for all the years that I've held unforgiveness in my heart, uh, whether that's friends, family, colleagues, uh, enemies. <laughs> Whoa, scary. Uh, September 11th is tomorrow. I'm not sure if you guys are watching this or if I get this uploaded today, the 10th or tomorrow, the 11th. Ugh. Hmm. Yeah, she's speaking a language that I don't quite understand, but I want to believe that she is going through a growth journey, uh, but I don't understand this language. I think it feels questionable to me. It feels very much like I am coping and using God as a Band-Aid to feel good about myself, and instead of being introspective, I'm doing like a bare minimum of just joining a religion and feeling good about it, and that I'm giving the words back to the people because God forgave me. But like, did you really fight your demons? Did you fight your shadow? Did you learn to incorporate your shadow? Did you learn to have a relationship with yourself? I think it's that. Yeah, like she, she's like moving off that Christian script, which you guys are very, well, you're pointing out, you know what I mean? In the comments, like she, uh, yeah, okay. I'll try to use the inflection. This I'm all about tone out, like tone and like body language, of course. But this is her. She's like, I forgive you because like Jesus Christ, my savior forgave me. And I just feel like, like, who am I not to forgive you? Hey, I said some really horrible things about Jesse, about Rachel, about so many people on this website. And I did it in the public. I let people see me be a horrible person to people that didn't deserve it. And I 
now realize how much that has impacted people. I Well, I guess in some ways she would have to talk to those people because even saying it in public, I've already spoken to those people, but I really need to speak to the public about it because I did it in public. You know, something like that. Like her tone needs to be grounded, like not the high, but down. Jesse, I'm sorry. I am mortified at the way that I treated you and you have every right to be upset with me something like that but instead she's like jesus christ like forgave me and so like i forgive you and it's just like oh her voice is here and i feel like it should be here so her voice is here you know what i said? I feel like her voice needs to be here jesse i'm so sorry jesse i'm so sorry it's like you know what I, like down here girl your voice needs to be down here yeah i don't i don't like it i don't really like it Either way, I want to say a quick prayer. As oh. you know, God, it is uh, almost the anniversary of September 11th, 2001, which shook America. Well, a lot of us, many of us, remember where we were, what we were wearing, what was going on around us. Like, it it truly changed life forever. It changed our perspective. It changed the way we traveled. It changed the way we looked at each other, the way we communicated. Life changed in that moment, and things have gotten worse God, we pray for the victims and the, the families of the victims that they've found peace. We pray that they've found love and rest. We pray for the heroes on that day and the days after. We, we applaud the volunteers. We applaud those who sacrificed their lives for the lives of others. We don't always understand tragedy. We know that there's evil in this world, and we know that you love us enough to give us free will so that we aren't just mere worship robots here to serve you. You give us the choice to serve you. And we know that when people choose to not serve you, that horrible things happen. <laughs> she said, y'all deserve 9-11, bro. She said, y'all deserve 9-11. <laughs> she said, when people don't serve God, fuck, sh fuck shit happens, bro. <laughs> she God, I don't understand what you're doing, but I trust you fully. I trust that those lost who put their faith in you are in heaven with you now, Lord. I put my faith in you that I also will be in heaven with you. And death has lost its sting when I put my faith and love and trust in you. I pray that peace over everybody listening to this right now. I pray for peace in our country. Oh, fuck. This is long as shit, bro. I just want to say my my partner and I do spend a lot of time during our day screaming, I am the monster, <laughs> because we just think it's so funny. It's so good. It will never not be a classic, bro. I pray that- Shout out to the Thought Spot in chat. Amen, brother. Amen, brother. You raise up strong leaders. I pray that you knock the arrogant leaders of our world today to their knees. I pray that you shake them hard with revelation and the fear of God. God, be scary and put the fear of yourself in other people so they piss their pants when they think of you. Thank you for saving the souls of those who believe in you and cursing the ones who who don't believe in, to, believe in you into going into the towers that day. That's what I'm hearing, girl. I'm hearing Gabby is saying that those who didn't believe in Jesus Christ had bad things happen to them. I guess that must would have been, that must have been what happened on 9-11 because bad shit happened. Feels a little, this is cringy. Oh my God, it's the rest of the video. Oh my God, is it the rest of the video? Girl, I just scrolled and I ain't seeing no more Gabby. This is all a black screen. Oh Lord, we're gonna sit here for two more minutes. I pray that the people open their eyes and begin to vote for us and not for them. I pray that we the people can join together again. A nation divided cannot stand. It's no longer us against them. It's us against everyone. I pray, God, for the whole world to join in one body in Christ and turn to you. Even now, you said, you said, even now you can turn to me and you promise to be a shield and a protector and a guide and a provider. But we are one body. And if so much of the body is sick, the body doesn't function. We have to stand together. As <laughs> My girl hasn't learned anything, bro. My girl hasn't learned 
one fucking thing. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's so ungrounded. It is so ungrounded. It's just like I haven't learned a goddamn motherfucking thing. Jesus, I fucking love humans. Humans are going to human, bro. Am I not fucking right? You could just know. You just know, bro. Nah, 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 nah. As one body. Lord, I pray that for this nation, for this world, for our small towns, for our communities, for our schools, for our churches. I pray that we become one body, every part of the body important equally, cherished equally. Okay. That's 16 minutes and 48 seconds, but this video still has like, it's, it's 17 minutes and 17 seconds long. <gasps> 17, 17. Thank you, God, for humbling oh, me. Jesus. Thank you for calling me home when I went missing. Thank you for I the have discipline. This, wait, I have this set up on 1.25. I am today who's dedicated to serving you. Ugh. I pray <laughs> all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Beautiful. Gorgeous. What an ending. What a classic ending. Wow. How Gabby. How fucking Gabby Hannah was that, bro? How fucking Ga Gabby Hannah was that? That was so Gabby Hannah. It feels like zero work has been done, Gabby. I love that for you, girl. I, girl, you gave us nothing and we're here for it. 2024, we love accountability. I, you know, was that what that was? I'm an atheist, but I do find it very beautiful and amazing what religion can do for people. Turning to faith is anyone's decision. I'm glad she found healing and happiness through God. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> this feels so healing. And if it, even if they never see it, I'm glad you did this. Grasefa, Joey Grasefa. Thank you, Gabby. I'm so happy to see you are in a better place now. Just, okay, well. <sighs> People are on a journey, bros. This is what I'm saying. When Gabby Hannah slides into your DMs, you say, nah, nah, Gabby. I'm good. I'm good, girl. No, no, no. I wish her the best. But... You know, not for me. <laughs> not for me. All right. Not for me. Not my bubble. Not my monkey. Not my circus. Good luck, Gabby. <laughs> Good luck. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Da 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 da